hear that, guys? That's the sound of American performance. That's horsepower. <laughs> Today we're ceramic coating this Tesla Model Y. We're gonna be going over everything from the initial inspection to the prep bay, to the paint correction, and then to actually installing the ceramic coating. All right guys, so before every detail, what we do is we walk around and we inspect the vehicle. And we take any pictures of anything that's kind of outstanding or something that looks like it's a defect on the vehicle before we even lay our hands on it. So that's what we're doing now. We got a little chunky spot here. Oh. You find anything? There's a little ghost, it's hard to see, but... You so said there's a pretty big ghost up here? Yeah, there it is. <laughs> Shouldn't worry, need to worry about my brake dust either. Nah. We got a little ghost right here, which is just a sanding mark from the factory or the dealership trying to sand the dust nibs. Camera didn't pick it up, but we got another one right on the back here. <laughs> we got one on the back. Ghost here, or a little sand mark from the dust nibs. One on the other side over here. It's a little crack on the Tesla emblem here. Might be schmutz, but we'll we'll document it anyway. It's a little scratch on the Tesla emblem. A little something there. Could be a bug. Could be a scratch. <laughs> <laughs> so we got a rock wedged in behind. Is this technically a hubcap? So the point of sale system that we use here at the shop is called You're Able. When we do those inspections, we take all those photos and we upload them into the app. And what that does is it saves all those inspection photos to the customer's profile. The wheel wells are pretty dirty, but they're not too bad. We got all the bug remover on the front facing panels. Now Lou's gonna hit this thing with so if you guys watched our last video, we did how to do a maintenance wash, which is the exact opposite type of wash, what we're doing now. So right now we're doing a strip wash on the paint, which is gonna remove any old waxes or sealants, and it's gonna help kind of like loosen up all of the other embedded contaminants in the paint. So in our mixture, we have a stripping soap that removes all those old waxes and sealants. We also have iron removers mixed into the foam cannon. So every time we foam down the vehicle, it's also gonna be getting iron remover on it, and it kind of just saves a step. Yeah, since so we got like multiple people on the car right now, John's got the wash mitt in hand, kind of just getting a head start, same with Luke up top. And Paige, hey, she's taking like the soft bristle brush and then kind of just getting in like all of these cracks and stuff. That way if there's any like little bits of like gunk and stuff in there, we'll get all those out. It's little things like that that make like a big difference in the details. So we foam the vehicle twice. The first time is just for washing the vehicle. The second time is we're gonna use that foam as lubricant for the clay mitts and clay bars. Plus there's also more iron remover in the foam cannon still, so we get to use iron remover twice on the paint. So we're using clay mitts and clay towels on this paint. Uh, if the paint was really bad and there's a lot of embedded contaminants, we would use a legitimate clay bar, but this paint doesn't need it. It's way more efficient just to use the clay mitts and clay towels. What clay actually does is if there's any embedded contaminants in the paint, it'll peel it out instead of just smearing it and scratching it deeper into the paint. Clay kind of like peels it. So now the Tesla's pretty much done in the prep bay. 
After doing the initial inspection, we cleaned the wheels, washed the entire vehicle, including getting everything out of the cracks and crevices of the exterior body panels, and then we rinsed it off, refoamed it, and again, the foam mixture that we're using on here was a, it was a stripping mixture that stripped off any old waxes or sealants. It also had iron removers in it that would get any embedded iron particles out of the clear coat and the glass. Once we foamed it down again, used clay mitts on all of the surfaces to remove any embedded contaminants from the glass and paint. Then once we rinsed off the foam from claying the vehicle. We took the glass parency windshield cleanser and then cleansed the entire windshield, rinsed that off, and now we're just finishing drying up the rest of the vehicle. I don't know if you could tell, but even after towel drying the paint, you can still see like a little bit of water left behind. And that's because there's literally no lubricants on the paint now. So pretty much the clear coat is completely naked. That way when we go to polish it next, we're gonna have a very even surface and a very consistent surface to polish on. And I just wanna to clarify too, you only wanna do a strip wash on your car if you know you're gonna be polishing after or at least reapplying a sealant, a coating to all the surfaces that were previously strip washed. All right guys, now that we finished drying off the entire vehicle after prepping it, we're gonna move it over to the paint correction area. So now that the Tesla Model Y is in the paint correction area, we like to set up all of these little spotlights that way. You kind of have like a center point to look at when you're doing paint correction. You can kind of see like where the swirls are and what the condition of the paint's looking like a little bit better. Well, all the swirl marks that you see right there is what we're aiming to remove. It might not be super noticeable, and the car's gonna look pretty clean even with them on there, but once you bring this thing out into the sun, especially after the coating's on it, you'd see those swirl marks like crazy, they're glaring. We're gonna be doing a two-step correction on this, which means that we're gonna start by using an aggressive pad with an aggressive liquid. So we're gonna be using Americana Global's purple wool pad paired with Americana Global's 1500. Then we're gonna follow it up with a finer polish to make it really pop. So you could tell that the dealership polished this before. You can see where the polisher hit the plastic. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take a little bit of painter's tape and then we're gonna go around all the trim and all the plastics just in case the polishers hit the plastics or the trim. It's not gonna stain it with the, the compounding liquids or anything. So when John and Luke are finishing up taping up all of the trim pieces, I'm going to do a test panel for the paint correction on this rear quarter panel. For this, I'm using Americana Global's purple wool pad along with Americana Global's 1500 diminishing abrasive compound. All right, so if you guys could see this little section here, it's pretty swirly, but those swirls are what we're trying to knock down. It's gonna be all right if there's a little bit of haze left behind. The final polish will knock that down, but these swirls right here gotta go. So one crosshatch on speed four with very light pressure didn't take enough of the swirls out. And we're gonna bump the speed up to speed six and add a little bit more pressure and do just one more crosshatch and see how that comes out. That is prime. Okay. Just like that. All right guys, so I think the compound got it where we wanted it to be. I turned up the speed on the machine to speed six and then added a little bit more pressure on the back of the machine and it took out about 80 to 90% of the swirls on there. So this is what it looked like before. You can see all those swirl marks in there. That's the, the panel below it. And then this is what the paint looks like now. So there's pretty much no swirls left especially in comparison to what it used to look like, like this. But yeah, the paint isn't absolutely perfect, but we're aiming for an 80% or more correction, and I think we definitely got it here. Yeah, so a lot of people complain that Tesla paint is extremely finicky and it never wants to cooperate with your pad and liquid combo, but we just used Americana Global's purple wool pad 
on speed six, moderate pressure, and then we use Americana Global's 1500 diminishing abrasive compound. And on the test panel, all I did was, I didn't really, really do a, a full cross hatch on the test panel just because the shape of the panel is very curved and stuff. And you know, it's kind of hard to go and do perfectly straight lines over curved panels. So what I did is worked with the, the shape of the panel when compounding and pretty much went over like the whole surface one and a half times, if that makes any sense. So if it was a cross hatch, it'd be like one and a half times. But I saw what I really did with the paint. Speed six, moderate pressure with a Rupes 21 millimeter Mark III uh, Bigfoot polisher. And then it took out pretty much all the swirls. I mean, and it didn't leave any hazing behind, which is awesome. As you guys saw, the first pass I did was with a brand new pad. So I was flinging dust and slinging product and the wool was shedding on the pad and stuff for the first one. But the second pass I did with the higher speeds and the less product, it came out great. Not too much dust, no, no sling really at all. And it came out pretty good. So speed six, moderate pressure, wool pad, 1500 and like one and a half cross hatches made it look great with no haze too. All right guys, so I just finished this back door here and I wanted to show you the before and after of the back door compared to the front door here. The front door hasn't been corrected yet, but the back door has, but just the compounding. So we haven't done any polishing yet. We've just done the, the compounding on it to remove all the heavier swirls. Uh, later, we're gonna go over and do the polishing to make the color really pop, but this is just what it looks like the before and after with just the compounding. So that's the before, and that's the after. Pretty much done doing the compounding on the Tesla Model Y now. We're gonna be moving on to polishing. So for polishing, we're gonna be using a Rupes Yellow Pad along with Americana Global's Finesse. So the reason why we do a fine polish after compounding, after you compound heavily, you're gonna leave a haze, which is kind of like a foggy look over the paint. That's just a bunch of little micro swirls in the paint that's left behind from the wool cutting pad. The wool cutting pad removes all of the big swirls leaves tiny tiny ones that are, you can't even see with the eye, just hazes up the paint. And then going over the panels with a fine polish afterwards removes all that haze, revealing the actual true clarity of the paint. And it makes it just pop that much more. Gonna make a correction, we're actually using an Americana Global's orange foam polishing pad for the final polish. The three inch Rupes machine is gonna be the one that's using the yellow Rupes pad, just because that one cuts a little bit more than the orange Americana pad. It allows the three to be a little bit more efficient when you're using it. we finished doing all of the compounding, all of the polishing, there's going to be compound and polish oil residue left on the clear coat. What we're doing now is spraying a surface prep IPA mixture onto the panels. That's gonna remove any oils from the clear coat. That way when we go to put the first layer of ceramic coating on the paint, it's bonding directly to the paint and there's no oil buffer in between the paint and the coating. So now we're just doing a very light interior cleaning on the Tesla Model Y. Uh, 
we got the Model Y IPA down. Now we're gonna move it over to the clean side of the shop and install two layers of Ceramic Pro 9H. Now that we're on the clean side of the shop, Luke's gonna be finishing glass parency. Uh, he's doing that all on his own and then John and I are gonna be installing the first layer and then the second layer of 9H. Alright guys, so we just finished doing the first layer of 9H on all of the painted panels. Now we're going to go over again over those same panels to add the second layer. Basically, what he's trying to say is we're adding another layer of sauce. I put way too much sauce on this one, guys. Guys, well, just to recap on the day, the Tesla Model Y came in, we brought it into the prep bay, did our inspection on it, so we took all the pictures, took note of any imperfections that were already on the vehicle. After doing our inspection, we then prepped the entire vehicle, brought it to the paint correction area, did a full two-step paint correction on it. After IPAing the entire vehicle, we then moved the Tesla Model Y from the dirty side of the shop, which is where the prep bay and the paint correction is always done, to the clean side of the shop, where the window tin and the ceramic coatings are applied. Once it got to the clean side of the shop, we then installed the rest of glass parency, so the windshield was completely coated, and then we moved into installing Ceramic Pro 9H. Ceramic Pro 9H has a 9H hardness on it. It hardens the clear coat from a factory clear coat hardness of about three or four to nine on the hardness scale. We did the first layer of 9H. Once we got back to the starting point, it was about an hour, and then we went around and did the whole thing over again applying the second layer of 9H. Tomorrow, we got top coat, which is the third layer of ceramic coating. Ceramic Pro plastics on all the plastic parts. Wheels are already coated with wheel and caliber, and then we're gonna be doing a lot of final touches to it, and then it's gonna be on its way to this customer. The reason why we're not doing top coat today is because 9H needs about 12 hours to cure, 
before we could put top coat onto it. So it only needs one hour in between each layer of 9H, but once we add top coat, which is a different ceramic coating product, uh, still by Ceramic Pro, but it's a different coating, you have to leave a 12 hour buffer in between those two ap different applications. Yeah, that's all for today. We're gonna check back in early tomorrow morning and get this thing coated with top coat and plastics and then do all the final touches. And then you just and then you just can't catch up. And that's what stinks. Like let's just say you're busy because this happens to me all the time. Where like I'll be like busy doing it itself and time wise, like I actually can't go to bed early. It's like sometimes. Especially if you living like out there. And then if I like am short on sleep for one night, like my next three nights I have to catch up. But like I just I, sometimes I just can't. And I feel like uh, I feel like last night was one of those nights where because I, I didn't even finish eating dinner. I fell asleep with chicken tenders on my lap. All right guys, today starts day two for the Tesla Model Y. All right, what we're gonna be doing today is just installing top coat and then we're gonna be applying a starting pro plastics to all the plastic pieces on the, on the outside. And then that's gonna be it. We're gonna put a little bit of tire shine on it, make it look good, do all the final touches, and then this thing's gonna be ready to roll. Show the world what top coat looks like. It looks exactly like 9H, but the label says top coat. <laughs> That's the secret. <laughs> Doesn't smell so much like, uh, as much like ceramic. It smells a little bit more fruity. fruity. Yeah. <laughs> so fruity. <laughs> How's it going on on top of the 9H? It's smooth. It's a lot smoother, yeah. Oh, yeah. Is it wiping off smooth? Oh, yeah. Going pretty light with the drops, too. Yeah. Yeah. I put a bunch on at the start. You know, but... Yeah. All right, so installing top coat, it's pretty much the exact same thing as installing 9H. The only difference is we use a little bit less product. The reason for it is because when you install top coat, it shreds way easier, especially when it's on top of 9H. It shreds way easier than 9H does. So if you were to use too much product, it's just gonna get smeary and no one wants that on the install. It doesn't look good. We use less product in this situation, less is more. Actually, don't wipe it, don't wipe it. <laughs> is that a high spot or low spot? We're gonna look at it, we're gonna see. Hold on. I don't even know. Nice. So right there, I don't know if you guys can see it. Right there. Nice. It looks like we got a little bit of a high spot. That's what a high spot is. It looks kind of just like a smudge. The camera's not really picking up too great. But all it is is just an excess of product. There's too much product in that one area making it pile up a little higher, which makes the finish uneven. And that's why it's called a high spot. We'll take care of it. Did it wipe away? No? Nope. Maybe I put that like hand polish it off. Just so I know, which pa did, are, did you do the doors, both doors? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had to think. <laughs> yeah, they just did the rainbow. I feel like a scratch. It could be. <laughs> Honestly, it almost doesn't even look like a high spot. Does it? Because <laughs> high spots usually look like they have like water droplets in them. Yeah, a little, a little from mist. From the yeah, from the uh, like like a lot of times you could see like it looks like an excess of product. That does kind of just look like a scratch. <laughs> Try polishing it. I think it is a high spot though, because if you come and look on this side, you're not gonna be able to see it from there. Okay. See, there's like a um, middle on the plastic. Yeah. So once we put plastics on it, that'll help out. But we'll try to get very um, accurate with it. So if you polish it just a little bit, just to the point where it's gone. So remember, it's a high spot. You can polish it down to the right level. That way, you don't have to re. Uh, apply 9H, so if you go very gentle with it, you can put, you just, all you gotta do is put top coat back on. See what happens. See what happens. We're gonna take that high spot right there. Right there. And we're gonna polish it out just a little bit. Not allowed to polish all the coating off, but just enough to level it with the rest of the 9H. And as you can see, like, the reason why it's so important to do that is because, like, you can kind of, you can even tell on camera when the light hits it the right way, 
it glares pretty bright. It's hard. Still there, like not as much though. Yeah, it's definitely coming out. Yeah, it's coming out. Was our idea in the winter. Those are what in the winter? Our idea drifting around the carts and everything and the bikes, but it was just so sloshy, like none of us went anywhere. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, when you guys were good, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we were trying. <laughs> we're just getting stuck. Alright guys, so we're all done putting all of the ceramics onto the Tesla Model Y. On the windshield, we got glass parency, and then we have two layers of 9H and one layer of top coat on the paint. Alright guys, so that concludes the detail for this Tesla Model Y. Just a recap, what we did on this was, first thing, we did our initial inspection on it, so we took note of any scratches or dings or ghost sanding marks on the paint. Uh, anything pretty much wrong with the vehicle, we documented it prior to laying our hands on it. After doing our inspection, then we moved into the prep bay. Once we brought the Tesla into the prep bay, what we did is we did a full decon 
of the paint wheels and everything to make sure that it's very clean. We did a strip wash on it to remove any old waxes or sealants. That way when we go to polish the paint, the clear coat was completely bare. That way we had a more consistent polish. After the prep bay, we then moved the Model Y to the paint correction section. What we did there is we started off with a mild compound, so it wasn't extremely heavy. We used a diminishing abrasive compound, Americana Global's 1500, paired that with Americana Global's purple wool pad, which is an absolute dream to work with, that pad and liquid combo. Uh, pretty much works on any type of vehicle, whether it's super hard paint or super soft paint or anything kind of in between. You can use that pad to get the job done like pretty well, and that's what we use to compound this Tesla Model Y. After all the compounding, we then jumped into polishing using a fine polish on the paint. What we did for this is we used uh, an Americana Global's orange pad for the 15 mil and the 21 mil polishers. With the three inch, we used a yellow Rupes pad that corrected out the paint very well. And after the paint correction, we then used a surface prep product, what a lot of people refer to as an IPA, an isopropyl alcohol mix, to remove any of the oils from the compound and the polish. All compound and polish is is just a bunch of oils that have different levels of abrasives in it. So what the IPA surface prep product does is it removes that oil Oil. That way when you go to put the ceramic coating or sealant onto the clear coat, there's no oil barrier in between. The coating can land directly into the pores of the clear coat. After all the correction was done, we moved the Tesla Model Y from the dirty side of the shop to the clean side of the shop. So the dirty side of the shop is where all the prep and all the correction gets done. The clean side of the shop is where all of the window tinting and ceramic coatings get applied. We're now in the clean side of the shop. We finished installing glass parency, saw the A product and then the B product, finished buffing it off so that the windshield is completely clean. After Luke finished installing glass parency, John and I then moved into the first layer of 9H. So pretty much with all the painted surfaces, we started in the back, worked our way around with 9H. That took about 40 minutes to get done. By the time we got back to the spot that we started from, it was time to apply the second layer of 9H. When you apply two layers of 9H, there's a time barrier where there's like a time window where you need to apply the second layer in that time window. That way the 9H, the first layer of 9H doesn't cure too quickly or you're not applying it too soon. So 40, 40 minutes to an hour is kind of where that window is for us. Uh, in the environment that we're in to install the second layer of 9H. And then that was it for the day. We needed to let those two layers of 9H cure for about 12 hours before we could get our hands on, back onto the vehicle to apply top coat. Also on day number one, we ceramic coated the wheels as well. But then that concluded day number one. The next morning we came in and then we started to apply top coat, double checking for any high and low spots, found one high spot, leveled it down really quickly, not an issue. Yeah, and then we installed top coat on all the painted surfaces, and then we installed Ceramic Pro plastic on all the plastic surfaces. After we installed the ceramic coating, then John went around and put tire shine on all four tires, and then we went around and just double checked to make sure that all of the dust was out of all the cracks and uh, everything was nice and clean and ready to roll. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, that helps us out a lot. We're trying to get to a thousand subscribers. Once we get to a thousand subscribers, we're gonna be doing a free giveaway. One bottle of breakdown wheel cleaner and one bottle of midnight tire conditioner. So leave a comment below what your favorite model of Tesla is and if you were to have it, what color would you want in it? All right guys, thanks for tuning in. I'll see you in the next one. Remember, like, subscribe, share your friends, and turn on that post notification bell.